Hey, welcome to another episode. I'm Pip Masterix, and today we're bringing back an ancient technique. Before I'm gonna nosedive into this technique, I wanna talk to you about our website, pipmasterx.com. We got thousands of recipes on it. It's an insane website, and it's totally free, all barbecue, just for you. So go check it out after the video. There is an ancient technique of cooking fish in salt. And now you're going like, oh, yeah, I know about that. I know you know. But what if we use that technique for ourselves to use as barbecues, as steak lovers? Like this beautiful Australian Wagyu steak. Normally I would cook this beautiful ribeye with the reverse sear technique to get it absolutely perfect. But what if we can make the reverse sear technique better by using that salt crust? First we're gonna make a mixture for the salt crust. Of course we're gonna need a lot of table salt. Any type of salt will do. Make sure you use enough salt to cover the whole steak with. Then we're gonna use the egg white of two eggs. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Now I'm gonna mix that up with my hands and it should have the texture of wet sand. And while we're at it, we're going to make a steak rub. Consisting of one part salt, one part ground pepper, one part dried oregano, one part dried parsley, a quarter part garlic powder, and half a part onion powder. Give it a good shake and our steak rub is done. Now let's get that onto our steak. Of course we want it on both sides and now our steak is ready to go. The reason that this technique is so popular with fish is that the fish has scales and a skin which protect the meat from the salt that sits on top. Now if you would take a steak like this that we just seasoned and put salt on top of it, the salt is just gonna draw into the meat and make it the saltiest steak you ever had. So we gotta solve that problem now. Luckily, we have something called butcher's paper. Yes, and if you're not uh, acquainted with barbecue, butcher's paper is something you can buy on amazon.com. Look it up. But what we're going to do is use this butcher's paper as a shield. We're not going to use aluminum foil or like cling film or whatever kind of stuff. No, 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 no. We need a little bit of surface that will allow a little bit of salt to come through and a little bit of moisture to go out, just like the scales of the fish. So basically that's this. This is gonna mimic that effect. Now we're going to wrap this steak in the butcher paper, but how will we know when it's done, when we wrap it in there? We can't see it. We can't probe a thermometer through it. So I came up with the idea to just Take a thermometer like this, a wireless one, stick it in our steak, and then package the whole thing together. Of course, I want it centered in the eye, so I gotta make sure I go <laughs> dead center. And now I'm going to wrap it up. Wrapped it tight, and now we're going to build basically a salt oven. So I got our salt, and I got a tray, and we're making a base layer sit the steak on top and then just put the rest on top of it. <laughs> this is so much fun to do. This is like a kid playing. Yeah, it's like a sandbox. It's like dad's playing at the beach. Dad's building the sand castle. There we go. Look at that. So now all we need to do is get this in the barbecue and I got a beautiful master build sitting there which is absolutely perfect for this job. So let's fire it up. We're currently running at a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius. Now I'm gonna put the tray on and I'm gonna let this cook. Now you might think 180, that's really high, but because we got it packed in salt and the salt's gonna redistribute the heat and it's gonna take a long time to warm up. So we're gonna get actually core temperatures of around probably more like 120 to 140 degrees inside the salt. That's why we need the hot 180, maybe even 200 on the outside. I think we should. I think we seriously screwed up. Morris and I were doing live on Instagram and look, the, I, I apparently got the notification, remove the steak from the fire. Wow, this happens guys, this happens to me too. 
I know you're probably drinking beer when this happens, but to me, this happens when I'm doing <laughs> Instagram. <sighs> okay, we're just gonna follow through and see what it looked like. But this is seriously bad news. Let's take it off the grill right now, let it cool down and see the, what the damage is. Oh man, I can't believe, I can't believe we did this. I wanna get this off as quick as possible. Oh. Look at that crust, looks good though. Ooh, look at that. Let's see if the paper did its job. Protecting that steak. Oh, smells good. Smells good. Definitely looks a little overcooked. I must, I must admit, it's too hot. It's definitely, definitely overcooked. It's still super juicy. And then, of course, we still need a crust on this. I never overcooked a steak like this before. It's like 20 degrees over, and it's just insane. It's like we let it cool down now for around 15 minutes, so it's. It's like cool to the touch, it's like not, it's like medium, it's luke, lukewarm. That's, that's the word I was looking for, lukewarm. And of course, I still want to sear on it to get a crust on the outside, even though it's overcooked on the inside. And I'm just going to follow through, finish the steak, because you never know what might happen. This might still turn out relatively okay. So I got the master build set up now for direct heat. So if you look in here, you can see the flames shooting out of this grill. And that's where I'm gonna set my steak. We're gonna get a beautiful sear on this cast iron grill grate. So if you ever wondered, this is the face of an upset pit master. Man, I can't, I can't believe it happened to me. It's like one of those things where you think like, it ain't never gonna happen to me. It happens to me. I'm just gonna try first a piece of steak. Like, let's agree here that this is overcooked. Some people might enjoy this actually, but uh, to me, this is super, super overcooked but it still is juicy because of that fat. 20 degrees Celsius, over. Eh? That's like 40 Fahrenheit. That's like the, the temperature of the sun, man. Okay, here we go. What? I mean, I was ready for a big, big disappointment, but it's tasty. It is somewhat juicy and it somewhat tastes like brisket. A soft steak, like I've had like really, really rare steaks that were less tender than this. The, the only thing that maybe uh, decreased a little bit is the juiciness. Like the pit master said, it's kind of like brisket. I, I don't want to be the guy that says, because I screwed it up, now it's okay, you know? I screwed it up. It's a screw up. But I'm glad I, I screwed up this steak. That's like, that's the whole thought process that I'm going through. I'm glad this is the one that got screwed up. There could have been steaks that would have never survived this. Well, if I paid 100 euros in a restaurant and I was expecting a medium rare steak, I would have been angry. But, but if I screwed this up on my own, I would still enjoy the meal. And it's all about enjoying the meal, right? Yeah. So probably, I, yeah. think, I think we might have some friends, you might have some friends, you might have some friends that if you would serve this to, they wouldn't even notice. No. This was overcooked. No, they, they, they might be noticing it by the color. I'm just wondering, like, now the whole thing with the salt crust is basically a bust. Yeah, we, we didn't, like, we can't talk about salt crust because it didn't work. You, you can't, like, fold this on the salt crust because basically I didn't cook it in a proper way. I cooked it, overcooked it. So you can't blame it on the salt crust. No. You can't blame it on a the thermometer because it put out the notification. No. You can know, know who we can blame? Hmm? Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. And we should have a congressional hearing about this. Everything was ready and set to go, 
and somehow I got distracted. Yep. Did a live session and everything went to, and that's and that's basically Instagram soul. All right, just talking nonsense here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, sorry for messing up this beautiful steak. I do apologize. And uh, I think Ava can have another piece because like, she's the best dog on this whole planet. Hope to see you guys next time. Big thank you to our patrons and the YouTube members. Cheers. Hey, smart. And keep on grilling. We should have a restaurant that overcooks steaks on purpose. <laughs>